In this video, we're going to be talking about how does your adaptive immune system create antibodies that are able to effectively fight the coronavirus. And in the majority of patients who are infected by the coronavirus who survive the infection, this is what happens. And so when you are initially exposed to the coronavirus, your body does not have an immune response to it because this is something that none of us have ever seen before. But fortunately, our adaptive immune systems are meant specifically for situations like this where we've never seen viruses like this type before. And so what happens in the case of the initial response to the coronavirus infection is that you have things called B cells roaming around in your bloodstream. And B cells are these specialized types of immune cells that secrete things called antibodies. But they'll only make these antibodies if they've been activated. And B cells are also very interesting in that every B cell is unique. It expresses a different type of B cell receptor on its surface. And so these B cell receptors have been programmed by your immune system. They've been trained by your immune system in the bone marrow, that's why we call them B cells, to only target things that are not itself because you don't want to start attacking your own cells if your B cells might think that you know one of your good guys is actually a bad guy. So after the plasma B cells have been trained to recognize only bad things and they all have this little special unique B cell receptor, that's when they start patrolling around in your bloodstream to figure out do I have affinity for anything that's now not self. And so what this is called is called a, it's a repertoire of B cells. And so your adaptive immune system has this repertoire of B cells that is roaming around in your body. And so as you're being infected by the coronavirus, most of the B cells in that B cell uh, repertoire have no affinity for the coronavirus. So even though your immune cells right here, the coronavirus will just walk right past it because it doesn't have that affinity. So you have no response to this thing, which is the reason why, especially in severe cases, the coronavirus is able to effectively infect so many cells and continue infecting so many cells unimpeded. And so eventually what happens though is that there is some B cell that has the right B cell receptor on it that will have a binding affinity for the coronavirus. And so when this event happens, this B cell will become activated and it will recognize that there's now this bad guy and I have a B cell receptor that can actually link and bind to this bad guy. And so what's gonna happen to this point is this B cell is going to start dividing rapidly because it recognizes that you know this, there's this bad guy present so I'm gonna make more copies of myself you know, one becomes two, two becomes four, and now we've got a lot of B cells in our bloodstream that have been activated and have affinity for the coronavirus, and they're going to start making antibodies that are specific for the coronavirus. And antibodies that are made by these B cells have two functions. The first function is to, number one, stick onto the part of the coronavirus that would otherwise be able to infect one of your cells. So this is physically blocking the coronaviruses that are in your bloodstream from being able to infect cells, but also make it very obvious that this is a bad guy because other cells in your immune system, specifically macrophages or white blood cells, are able to see these antibodies and when they do, they're able to say, okay, you're clearly a bad guy, so I'm just gonna eat you and get you out of here. So when your adaptive immune system eventually finds what are the right B cells that have affinity for the bad guys, now we're able to actually make a bunch of antibodies that have affinity for the bad guy. And this is the story that's happening in everyone who has that immune response that is able to help them survive infection by the coronavirus. And especially in the severe cases where people almost die, the issue is that their B cells, you know, they were able to eventually make these B cells, but it just came so late in the process that by that point, the coronavirus is able to do a significant amount of damage, and your immune system, all the while, is sending out alarm signals saying that we've got this issue. And one of the big problems there is that the more alarm signals that are being sent out by your immune system, the more inflammation that we're causing. And because the coronavirus is a respiratory disease, and it's targeting cells lining your throat and your sinuses, 
is that all this inflammation that's caused by these alarm signals is creating inflammation that eventually can cut off your ability to breathe. You're literally choking your airways and filling up your lungs with um, these fluids and it's making your other functions of your body unable to do their job. And so this is called cytokine storm and that's where we have medications in hospitals called remdesivir among others that are able to help calm things down when it gets to this point. And so if you are severely infected by the coronavirus and you are nearly on the point of death, remdesivir is currently in clinical trials to see if this is a valid way of us basically being able to bring people back from the dead if you've reached that point of having so so much inflammation that you can no longer breathe or your organs are no longer able to perform their normal functions because of the amount of alarm signals in your bloodstream. And so right now, even though we don't necessarily have a vaccine present, we do have an adaptive immune system that has had millions of years of time to evolve and figure out a way to respond to this bad guy. And the thing to remember here is that in the majority of cases, our adaptive immune systems are able to come up with the right antibodies quickly enough that it's able to save our lives. And so in the case of people who they don't even know they ever had the coronavirus, but the evidence shows that they do based on the current testing that we have, what's happening in them perhaps is that their immune system was able to start making these antibodies that they needed to make quickly enough that it never really became that big of an issue. And so what we're working on with our antibody vaccines is basically how can we make a bunch of these antibodies and start just giving them to people. And so you never need to actually get infected by the coronavirus to have the needed antibodies to actually stick onto and beat the coronavirus. So that's how antibody vaccines work that we are working on. And we've got some clinical trials for this going on right now. Um, and that's going to wrap things up for this video. Hope you guys find it interesting. Let me know if you have any questions. Please stay safe and wash your hands, and take care.